Here we go, 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 go again. I am no stranger to fan fiction. Uh, this is a truth universally acknowledged. <laughs> I started writing fan fiction when I was like 11 or 12 and I posted it on fanfiction.net because that was the only fan fiction website that I knew of. And then I deleted them all years later out of shame and I didn't have any <laughs> of the documents and I didn't have literally anything from from my old glory days. But thanks to the Wayback Machine, I have now found my old shit. <laughs> And we're gonna explore it today Yay! and maybe maybe do a dramatic reading. Yes. I have not read any of these because I was like, I need a fresh reaction. My name on fanfiction.net was have I told you this? No. What is it? <laughs> oh no. Why don't we why don't we take a take a peek? Oh no. Agent author? <laughs> Agent author and my uh profile picture was apparently a pipe. Wow. I mean, I'm still all about, I'm still all about blazing it. Okay, so we have seven selections here. One is strawberry shortcake, which is the one that I think we'll have to start off with yes, first. Yes, please. And then, I love her. And then, oh my god, right? I, she's great. so great. I'm excited for you to read this one because it's just, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> we never know what 12 year olds are thinking. Cheater is a four letter word, was published October 19th, 2011, so I was 12. It's amazing how much I wrote in like a year. I have that one Spider-Man mm. fanfiction that's taken like a year and it's not done yet. And the last, oh my goodness. The last chapter was like I six can't. months ago. Puck is cheating on strawberry, orange, ginger, and angel. They find out and get revenge. What do you mean cheating? Like, is he hanging out with other people? Like he's like... dating all of them at the same time. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. Huckleberry Pie was a cheater. A rotten cheater. He was dating four girls at once. It didn't start out that way, but things happened and fell into accidental place. What the fuck? <laughs> what does that even mean? Yeah. But Huckleberry Pie was still a rotten cheater. He started out dating Angel because she seemed the sanest of the four, and she was blonde who made cakes. What's better than that? <laughs> Am I right, ladies? Dude. Strawberry Shortcake had a hectic life and just needed some alone time. Dot, dot, dot with somebody else. That sounds so suggestive. I was a 12 year old <laughs> asexual writing this. <laughs> Huck enjoys adventure. The most adventurous girl he knew was Ginger Snap. Ginger was a cookie making tomboy that Huck could relate to. Plus she lived right near the river fudge. Convenience. Yes. But all this dessert made Huck thirsty and juice quenched certain thirst. Who made juice? Why orange blossom of course. What this is fuck? so weird. <laughs> what? This sounds so suggestive. This like, is, dude, right? It sounds this so- This is four chapters. Dating four girls was getting exhausting and couldn't hide it much longer. Huck was running out of excuses for why he couldn't stay at Ginger's because he had to see Strawberry. If it was Strawberry, he was supposed to see- Wait, what? Like, if it oh. even was her that he was supposed to- Like, Ew. he can't even keep track of who he's cheating on. My dude. So How Huck... does he cheat on them? They're all best friends. I know, They like... all see each other constantly. Boy, he did not think that through. They're all best friends, so they're all gonna talk about the guy that they're dating. And I'm sorry, but Huckleberry Pie just does not have that much game. Yeah. He just doesn't. So Huck tried to narrow his options and devise a plan to break up with the girls he liked the least. Wow, how kind of you, mm -hmm. sir. Orange Blossom was the first out. That, that was obvious, as well as being a rotten cheater. Huck was also a tad racist. <laughs> what? Damn, boy! Band Orange made juice. Juice, of all things. How come she couldn't just make donuts or something? Ginger Snap was out too. That tad bit of racism applied to her as well, and Ginger was trying to get him fat. Real fat. Or at least, that was his only somewhat good excuse to break up with her. Wow. But how could he decide between Angel and Strawberry? They were both so nice, which made Huck barf. Blonde or redhead? Redhead. They're rare. What? <laughs> What does that have to do with anything? Definitely Strawberry. She was more vulnerable and Angel had restricting parents. Bitch, they don't have parents! You never see parents. I don't know, I mean they like- They live by themselves, I right? I mean, Strawberry Shortcake somehow inexplicably has a sister, despite not having any parents. Yeah. But whatever. Strange. Huck's mind raced to form a plan to dump the three girls, but couldn't. They told each other everything. He had to do this. Fast, but how? That's where I come in. What? what? Is this a meta narrative? Does I mean author? Does I mean Adrian author? <laughs> Chapter one is a cheating cheater. Chapter two is called finding out. Strawberry was shit. <laughs> she was sh 
She was shitting. Freudian slip. Um, <laughs> strawberry was sitting at her strawberry-shaped table and sipping strawberry lemonade that didn't yeah. taste very good, but satisfied her because she likes anything with strawberries. The doorbell rang, and she opened yeah. the door to see uh, Ginger standing with a basket of sugar cookies dunked in icing. Hi, Strawberry. Ginger grinned. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how you... I did this thing all the time where I would use facial expressions to describe somebody saying something, even though nice. that's, like, that's, that's clearly not... <laughs> that's not how you do that. <laughs> uh, I brought cookies for the sleepover. I see that, Strawberry exclaimed in her <laughs> sugary voice. They look so very oh, yummy. God. Dude, do you remember that was a thing? They yeah, would say, oh, they, my they God. would say berry instead of very, and oh. I was like, wow. Come on in. Ginger stepped inside. They talked and waited for Angel and Orange to arrive when they heard a knock at the door. It was Orange, carrying a, pitch, a big pitcher of grape juice. Orange Blossom, Ginger and Strawberry squealed in unison. <laughs> Hi guys, Orange greeted. I whipped up some grape juice. Oh god, now I like to think of like Orange Blossom like stampeding across a bucket of grapes because <laughs> that's how you actually make oh, grape yeah, juice. Oh yeah, right, yeah. It looks delicious, Ginger encouraged. Wanna play patty cake with us? <laughs> oh my god, that sounds very fun. By now, I'm sure you figured out I'm being just ridiculous. Oh my god, author's note. Somebody pounded on the door. Strawberry opened it up, and Angel stood with a button cake in her hands. When all the desserts were placed on the floor, and the girls were sitting around them, Orange fa Orange's face got serious. Guys, I have to tell you something. Me too, Angel said. Ginger and Strawberry said the same. Then the fits of giggling came back. Okay, okay, Strawberry laughed. We tell each other all at the same time. One, two, three. Three. I'm dating Huck! They all said in unison. <laughs> Looks of confusion were exchanged across the circle. We're all dating Huck? Ginger questioned, feeling hurt. Revenge! <laughs> Angel shouted, her fist in the air. Oh my god, I totally just did yeah, that you too. Did. I love that. Yeah, the others agreed. Woo! Woo, let's go. Ow! Let's go. Cut his dick off. <laughs> Huckleberry Pie's dick off. <laughs> the next chapter is called Formulating, which I'm surprised I even knew that word when I was 12. The question is, Strawberry pondered, how do we do it? I have a few ideas, Custard uh, said smoothly from behind the entrance of the hallway. Oh, that's she, strange. She sashayed to Strawberry's lap and licked her paws. What kind of ideas, Angel asked skeptically. Custard put one hand on her chest and closed her eyes as if she was sophisticated. Of course, she said nonchalantly. My first idea is that we stick him in a log and roll him face first into the briar patch. I like it, but the briar patch doesn't even grow briars anymore, Ginger encountered, and that wouldn't get rid of Huck for good. Do they want to commit murder? <laughs> they might, bitch, they might. <laughs> Patience, Cookie, Custard snapped. My second idea is that we get a bunch of desserts and stuff him with them so he gets fat and dies. So they do want to commit murder, okay. We're practically doing that already, Orange said. We just haven't quite realized it until now. Stop with the critiques, Custer shouted, putting her paws on her ears. I only want compliments. <laughs> <laughs> she let go of her furry pink ears. My third idea is that we... She looked around and leaned in towards the group as if someone was listening and whispered her plan. Time out actually works, Strawberry said. Thank you, thank you, Custer said in imaginary applause. You couldn't have done it without me. Now bear in mind, I have no idea how this ends. For all I know, they could get a fucking Glock and just shoot him just up. Shoot him. <laughs> the next chapter is called The River Fudge. Guys, Huck swallowed, Can, can't we talk about this like reasonable people? Nope, Ginger said. Strawberry, how are those knots coming? Great, Strawberry announced. Oh, this is my bondage kink coming out. Oh. <laughs> Huck, I'm so glad that you taught me how to tie a pretzel soup a knot. She wow. tightened the ropes on Huck's wrists and started on his ankles. Yeah, that was definitely my bondage kink. <laughs> I'm so glad you invited me to watch, Honey Proud Lip. Oh my god, Honey! <laughs> honey Pie Pony! Excuse me, I did not realize Honey was in this. I must get the proper accent. Mm. I'm so glad you invited me to watch, Honey Proud Lip. <laughs> oh my goodness. A traitor being bound and thrown into the river fudge. Have I ever told you about that time I saved a drowning man from Lake Milkshake? The public gave me a standing ovation. You've told us twice. Today, Custard said grumpily. God, I am in love with these adverbs. She had to keep watch over Pupcake and Apple, which was no easy task. So Strawberry just brought her baby sister to witness this murder that she's about to commit. Strawberry and Angel grabbed Huck's arms and Orange and Ginger grabbed his legs. They heaved and lifted him off the ground, then swung him into the river fudge. Chocolate splashed all over everybody and they laughed. 
Strawberry picked, up, picked Apple up in her arms. Cheater is a four-letter word, she announced happily, and that word is hot. God! <laughs> Damn, that was kind of dark for a kid's show. Murder! <laughs> Murder. Okay, so Don Paolo, that villain I was talking mm -hmm. to you about, he is a master of disguise. Oh, okay. Somehow, even though Some he's the weirdest cow. looking fucking dude. Prep oh, no. yourself for this oh, one. Oh, God. He is so weird looking. I love him. He's an icon. Oh, my God. <laughs> but this is Don Paolo. How? And, um, How do you disguise yourself? He takes multiple uh, disguises like throughout the series. <laughs> also, he pretends to be Flora, even though clearly that is not, yeah. he could not, he could never. He could never. Um, he is, she is much smaller than he is. He has a giant mustache to conceal yeah. underneath that fit. Oh my god, it's so stupid. So, so I was like, this is a plot hole. <laughs> plot hole. And I determined, hey, what if Leighton meant to leave Flora behind in Dropstone, which is where Don Paolo leaves her after he takes on her disguise. Uh -huh. Oh, look at that! Flora squealed for the booths of Dropstone. And that! Oh, that looks amazing! Flora looked around her. Leighton and Luke were nowhere to be seen. Professor? Professor Leighton? Luke! I hate this British accent. Mm. She suddenly <laughs> saw a pair of arms closing in around her body. Eek! Meanwhile, Leighton and Luke had already noticed Flora was gone. Oh dear, Leighton observed. It seems we've lost Flora. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> we should retrace our steps, advised Luke. Yeah. I don't know why I gave him that voice. <laughs> Just as the pair turned around, an abnormally tall and pale Flora came around the corner. Phew, Flora said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I got caught up in the booths. <laughs> the three started walking. Professor, can I talk to you in private for a moment? Luke, da Luke asked. Of course. Of course. Fuck, their accents are so subtle, I don't know why I'm doing this. Excuse us, Flora. He and Luke walked into an alley. You know that was Don Paolo, right, Professor? Luke, sw Luke whispered. Yes, my boy, Leighton answered. I'm quite aware of it. We should probably expose him and rescue the real Flora, Luke said. Leighton thought for a moment. What had Flora ever done for them? <laughs> she was Damn, completely useless. So this mean. is like this is like his adopted daughter. Like he didn't raise her, but like he adopted her. Like this is his ward. Or he pondered, she could stay here and we could pick her up on the way back to London. No. Luke's like enraged. <laughs> He's like, how fucking dare you? Oh my god. Luke's eyes widened. Professor, he raged. How could you think such a thing? Don't you always say a lady's needs come first? Yes, Leighton answered. Flora needs to stay in Dropstone. That that doesn't justify your reason at all, though. Like, thank God nothing worse happened to her. Like, she would have been fucking dead in a barn. Oh my God. Chroma Mines, is that you? This last one is uh, my Lord of the Rings fan fiction. Have you seen oh Lord of God. the Rings? I have. I have. I have all the movies. Now, they're great. Who do you think 12-year-old me had a crush on? Well, Legolas is quite cute. Um, but it's Wasn't not Wasn't Legolas. Okay. Is it a guy or a girl? A guy. Okay. <laughs> this was long this was before. before. Okay. Long I, I didn't before. know. Okay. Um. Amazon? No. No. Okay. Good, good um, guess. It wasn't Frodo. Was it was it? fucking oh, Frodo. <laughs> I'm gonna kill myself now. Oh, Elijah Wood. Beautiful man. Mm -hmm. You know, th those, those blue eyes. Lovely. Um. <laughs> it's no offense, I just... He's a I fucking see. hobbit! <laughs> oh god, okay, get ready for some cringe. Are you ready? <laughs> of all the kind and polite hobbits in the Shire, Shithera Grincarve was agreeably the kindest and most polite, as well as the most cheerful and thoughtful. Every hobbit in Hobbiton, whether newborn or taking their last peaceful breaths, knew of one of the loveliest lasses in the Shire. Well, don't she just sound like a person? Oh yeah. <laughs> don't she just sound like a full, multi-dimensional person? With, uh, with with flaws and a personality. Yeah. Yeah, that was why I deleted this. I was like, this is a fucking Mary Sue right here. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote one. I make fun of them, and yet I wrote, wrote one. one. I have so many bats in the cave. I'm sorry. Don't <laughs> look at me. I'm a monster. <laughs> Sheath had bouncy golden curls that fell just below her shoulders and eyes of a brighter green than the door of Bag End, if that was possible. Sheath also had incredibly pointy ears, even for a hobbit such as herself. These ears were all hearing. If she's... Oh. oh no, what? 
so she <laughs> so she had like really strong hearing which is like kind of a cool subtle power yeah like oh i can hear fucking daredevil you yeah. know then my dumb 12 year old ass thought oh she can hear thoughts as well oh god because as we all know thoughts make sound waves that our ears can pick up on yes that is a thing that mm -hmm. exists brown leather fingerless gloves covered her hands which could destroy anything or end any life by a painful death with just one touch like her hands can do that yeah her oh. hands her hands were something only her parents had known about yes it says had why do i do this to myself yes it says had her hands were something on her only her parents had known about like yeah it says past tense bitch because oh. they're dead elian and argivine grincarve had perished in a fire caused by a dragon-shaped rocket several years ago so do you remember in wow the movie yes where it was when a Mary drag and Pippin set yes off that the firework, firework. oh so my god so rather gosh. than that being like a fun mischievous delightful and sort it caused of thing, the death it of two people killed her parents she now lived in a tree yes a tree <laughs> The fire burned possessions, none sentimental, thankfully, so the bright-eyed hobbit now lived in a tree. She's bright-eyed hobbit even though her parents died. Yeah. She she muscles through it. That's how it works. That's how it works, bitch. <laughs> this sunny day, she sat on a hill, her back against a large rock. Her sketchbook lay open on her lap and she was drawing a splendid picture of the playing children near her. She stood up and for the tenth time brushed her blonde side bangs from her face. She once again started down the path. Her thoughts somehow strayed to her family and she clutched the tiny bag held- it's basically like the Harry Potter thing. Oh. The tiny bag held around her neck by a leather strap. This was what held her sentimental art. It has the ashes of her parents in it. <laughs> oh god. That's a little that's just i don't think that's good to do i don't think that's healthy oh um God. that's a little concerning oh my God. you know has some traits of a uh, sociopath or, uh, it's not sociopath no, I mean, not it's sociopath. just it's just weird kidding. it's very weird though the grin carve orphan <laughs> was often distracted by her thoughts to even hear things through her all-hearing ears. Oh, God. This happened really. <laughs> this happened now when she bumped into a fast-walking hobbit with curly, dark brown hair and bright oh. blue eyes that were just as noticeable as her own green ones. Gee, I wonder who it is. <laughs> she fell back and outstretched her arm behind her to break her fall. This was a bad idea as she snapped her wrist. Br fuck, dude. What the fuck? Bringing herself an enormous amount of pain. She squeezed her eyes shut to stop the streaming tears. Oh my God. Goodness, I'm so sorry. When Sheath opened her eyes, they focused to see Frodo Baggins standing there, his hand outstretched. Are you all right? <laughs> and like, she's like, like he's a no. <laughs> like he's a fucking lifeguard or something. Like, hey, you <laughs> took a tumble there. Why don't you hop on my board? <laughs> we'll take all your troubles away. <laughs> no, Sheath winced, ignoring Frodo's hand and clutching her wrist. My wrist snapped. Here, let me help you, Frodo offered. He gently took Sheath's right arm and helped her to her feet. She held her left arm out and he examined it. This doesn't look good. I'll take you to my hole. <laughs> oh god, that sounds so wrong. Take just... me to your hole, Frodo Bag Ends. <laughs> <laughs> they introduce themselves. He takes her to Bag End. She looked at Bag End's enormity with sadness, missing having a hole at all. <laughs> I also miss having a hole. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> he asks her how her wrist is, and she, you have a very beautiful hole, Mr. Baggins. Oh God, nice hole. You have got a beautiful hole. Oh God. <laughs> She's like, oh, you must really like reading, cause there's books everywhere. And he's like, oh yeah, I like reading. What about you? And she says, I don't know how to read or write. <laughs> Yikes. And he's like, the fuck, bitch? You don't know how to read? She shows him her sketchbook. It was the picture of Elian and Argivine Grincarve's faces drawn into the swirly clouds in the sky. Next to them were Venlin Tripcharge, Tripcharge, oh god, and Adigo Millwidge. Those are my parents and their friends. They all died. <laughs> she didn't feel like getting into the details of who was who because that story was painful and she didn't know Frodo well enough. Although, yes. who was she supposed to tell? She'd been longing to tell someone her story for years, but never did. Maybe Frodo was her opportunity. I mean, this is a pretty small village. 
Yeah, I'm just... I feel like if four people die, it's like an event. Yeah. <laughs> my parents died in a fire that destroyed my whole... <laughs> nice. <laughs> She's like, here's part half of my painful backstory, and he's like, hey, this is the adventure that I went on. This is the plot of Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. I just met you, but it's fine. But it's fine. It's okay. I can barely talk about it with my friends. We all have PTSD, but ha you're blonde, so I trust you. <laughs> Frodo offers to walk her home, and she says no because she lives in a fucking tree and she's embarrassed. Mm, yeah. And he sense. says, please don't go out there. There are some lads who have had far too much to drink because, you know, they're hobbits. Yeah. And um, they're malicious drunks. Those, those, <laughs> those hobbits, hobbits. And they're malicious drunks. Um, first chapter was called Opportunity, and the second chapter is called Her, Her story. story. No! Her story! No. So she goes home, oh and she sleeps in a tree. Mm -hmm. Like you do. Brodo has an encounter with Rosie and Sam, and then Mary and Pippin are there as well. And Frodo... Uh, he's already smitten with Sheath, because who wouldn't be? She's blonde. Oh, uh, yeah. Goodness, Frodo, calm down. We can't give you advice on your love life if you're so hostile. This isn't about my relationship with her. Aha! So you do have a relationship! <laughs> no, I do not, and will you two just listen? You remember, of course, Bilbo's birthday in the- last birthday in the Shire? Of course, that was one of our greatest days. I don't agree. And uh. just why is that? Because you killed two people! Oh my gosh! <laughs> the color drained from Mary and Pippin's faces. The last I met is Shethera Grincarve, and the firework you set off destroyed her house and killed her parents! Yikes! How yes. did they not know that they killed two people? Oh my, Pippin said, covering his mouth. Where does she live now? <laughs> 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 That is none of your concern, Frodo Spat. Do you honestly think that I'll let you near her after uh, what you did? Oh, God. he's being so protective, and it's so gross. You just met her! Sheath okay. had heard the entire conversation <gasps> while changing into a light yellow dress with dark dr oh, green chains. No. Oh, important fashion while yes. she hears this incredibly dramatic detail. Okay, so from deep in the woods, she hears this conversation, apparently. I don't know how she doesn't have the, the dirt on everybody in Hobbiton. But whatever. She goes to Frodo's house and she's like, oh, I just heard this embarrassing conversation about the death of my family. <laughs> and she goes in, Frodo offers her tea and cookies. Okay, well, I guess it's time to start my story. So here's, let's just, let's just address this now. Elian and Argovine Grincarve are not her real parents. They are her adoptive parents. Oh! Her real parents are Adigo Millwidge and Venlin Tripcharge, the people from her drawing. And mm -hmm. how Sheath was conceived was Adigo was drunk and Venlin was in the forest and he assaulted her. You know, like hobbits do! Oh! Fucking hobbits! So hobbits did that. And then, after that happened, they fell in love and got married. Because uh. that's how that works. Venlin dies in childbirth because women don't die in any other way ever. Obviously. Uh, and then Adigo is so depressed that he gets drunk and falls into a river and drowns. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, I love that. <laughs> right? <It's> so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and so then Elian and Argovine adopt Sheath and they raise her and they teach her to draw, but they never teach her how to read. They don't educate their child. And they she just, has you know. hearing powers and mind reading powers and hand powers and a bag around her neck full of their ashes from when they died from when Mary and Pippin launched a dragon rocket into their home. We approve this message. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, okay, so I actually know the people who killed your parents. She's like, yeah, I know. I heard you. I today. heard you talking about I it, have man. incredibly powerful ears. I can hear your heartbeat and your thoughts. She cries. And that's the end of the chapter. Could you see my prowess from a young age? <laughs> Are you thoroughly impressed? Oh, yeah. Those were my fanfics from when I was 12. Thanks yeah. for watching. <laughs> Bye! I am so sorry for putting I... you through that. Bye-bye! Bye! -bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>